Track and Field, the most elite sporting event. Since the dawn of time, from the cavemen to the Greeks, track and field events have been practiced throughout all of history, showing only the strongest and most competitive athletes of our time. Here today, we get to interview Isaiah Brunache. Now, Isaiah Brunache recently competed in nationals for track and field in only his freshman year, and he placed second on the podium. In Vermont, when he was in high school, he took first in states, uh, set the state record, set the school record for throwing an unsurmountable distance that no one's ever been able to clear, especially this year. So let, let's let's hand it over to Isaiah. Yeah, my name is uh, Isaac Pernaki. Um, that's what people normally refer to me as at meets because they cannot pronounce my name. My real name is Isaiah Bernash, but it is what it is. Yeah, I'm a shot putter mostly, but I do all the throwing events. I currently attend SUNY Cortland, but I am an alumni of Mount Anthony Union High School. Uh, I have the state record in shot put for Vermont. I recently am runner-up on D3 Nationals for shot put. My PR currently is 17 meters um, in feet. That's 55, 10 and a quarter. There's technically four throwing events. Oh, five throwing events. Kinda. Okay. I'll start with my personal favorite shot put. So what it is really is you have a, a, a age-dependent weight ball. I throw a 16. Take the ball, have it in your neck, and then basically try and push it out and throw as far as you can. Discus is a disc, makes a lot of sense. It's about two kilograms in the college, also weight, de also age dependent on the weight. High school to one six, middle school to one K. What you do, have it in your hand. Best way to throw it is with your fingertips on it. Go back. Throw it. This other one, most only done in college, is hammer. It's a shot put on a string, basically. You, it's hard to demonstrate without one, but you get it here, spin it around, around, and then you release it. Pretty fun, hurts a lot, hurts the back a lot. And then there's weight throw, which just hammer, but real heavy. Um, and then there's javelin. I don't really consider this a throwing event, but that, you know, there's, it's always up for argument, you know. I, it's like, it's sprinters who want to throw, really. It's sprinters who want to throw. And basically, you have this, like, toothpick, and you run down a runway, and then you throw it. It's like darts, kind of, lawn darts, you know. And that's all the throwing events. <clears throat> Hello, my name's Cooper Niles. I'm a javelin thrower here at Mount Anthony Union High School, you know. As, as, as fun as, you know, the beef heads that do shot put and discus are, all you need is a little bit of muscle mass and it's all, fa it's all fantasy basically. Um, javelin, the real throwing event, is what I specialize in and I've qualified for Essex, States, all the, all the big meets this year. Which, uh, did you go to Essex by chance this year? This year? Yeah. No. Oh, I'm okay. Out. So, yeah. So, he didn't go to, so no, no. So, he didn't, I can just turn down your volume. Man. <laughs> so, like, um, let me tell you. Javelin, one of I'd say probably the most important, Absolutely the not. most impressive it's throwing cool. events. Um, I mean, it th it's the farthest throwing event. No, it's not. Well, kind of. It's the farthest throwing it's event. Farthest sprinting event. Sprinting event. Uh, I think it's cross training a little bit, but that's what I that's what I have to. Here's some footage of uh, me throwing javelin, <laughs> and then here is a uh, a, a diagram. No, no, a, an animation of Isaiah. Oh throwing javelin that I make. I'm gonna make uh, that in a few days. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're no, gonna fall. I can throw a javelin. You, we, can, we can get the jabs out. I can throw it. How far? How is competing at college? Just in general? 
Um, compared to high school, it's a lot more like put together, like actual like qualified officials. Um, I can only speak from the D3's perspective. There's still like a surprising amount of people who aren't good, like actually competing. Um, hmm. What else about it? It's 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 similar. There's a few extra events. Like now, like it's act. You can like there's actually hammer. There's actually javelin. But like it's still track meets. It's not much different. How do you deal with this pressure that comes during competition? Um, normally for me it varies on the pants. Some people scream. Some people yell. Some people punch things. I normally just go like dead silent. People like kind of know to stay away from me because I'm normally very angry if I throw bad. But hey, when you throw good, nice yell, nice like clap after you leave the circle. That's not how I yeah, deal with the pressure. Okay, let's break it down a little bit. So what the yell is really, at the end of a throw, oftentimes, especially in shot putters, they have this loud grunt that they do. Um, some have more, Joe Kovacs, huge grunt guy. Uh, something peepery, I forget his first name, went to Texas, huge yell. Um, Kovacs, not as much of a yell, a little bit there, right? So the idea, like the colloquial is like, okay, the yell gives you like 10% power. What the yell really is, it's just like, it's like, if you know anything about lifting, it's like bracing. When you, when you lift, you brace your core, and it increases the inner abdominal pressure. So right, so when you're going to do that yell at the last bit of the throw, it's you releasing that last bit of pressure out. It, let, it allows you also to like be more confident chasing after that ball, because that's all that is. It's just that last big push to chase after the ball. For me, I'm not a big fan of the yell. I don't normally yell, but like, it happens. Like on big throws, it's almost like you're gonna yell. Cause like it's just that last push you need to really get the ball going. That's that's what the yell is. Can you give us a uh can you give us a yell for two for three? <laughs> Boom! That's that's I can not do that more than once, but just maybe two more, or like even just standing and like just so we can have the audio clip. <laughs> um, there's this rule generally when you're trying to master things. It's a 10,000 hour rule for throwing. I've heard it called the 10,000 throws rule for throwing. At the end of the day, there's going to be some people like genetically gifted, but the person who works the hardest, more than likely, probably going to get it. See, I get the reps in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So oh, many. Krauser. Um, Krauser works really hard. Genuinely, he works really hard. Um, he's a great example. He is tall, yes, and he has great gifts, yes. But he probably also started throwing when he was like in third grade. And like the more time you can put in, the farther you go. Joe Kovacs, second best in the world. Six foot, wasn't the greatest thrower ever. He threw his 23, was it 23, 23, and is currently the second best in history. Krauser is an example of genetics. Kovacs is an example of just pure hard work because he's not the toss. He's short. Short. Short than me. Gives me hope. Gives me hope. Gives me hope. Um, I'm currently only a Vermont State champion. That's the only championship I've actually won. But, uh, uh, you know, throw far, you know, get a lot of reps in. It's going to suck a lot. It's going to suck most of the time. It's going to suck 99% of the time. But when you hit a PR, it's going to be great. It's going to feel so good. PRs are the best feeling in the world. It's kind of like I'm a drug addict, drug addict that I'm just addicted to the dopamine rush when the ball goes a little far.